Thought I'd try a new spot, hang out in the backyard, see what the audio is like, see if the lighting is good. Hey, I just quickly want to talk to you guys about a new knife that I just received. And it's the second time I've had this knife. The first time is when they first came out with it. And it's the Fieldcraft by Tops, the Brothers of Bushcraft. The first one I had was a carbon steel, and it was an absolute beast. They may have changed their manufacturing process on these. I don't know if they were CNCing the bevels and stuff, but it just it wasn't that great an example of their craftsmanship. So I got rid of it after a while. But where I live now is just so humid. It's ridiculous. That stuff just sits around and rusts. And I'm getting tired of it. So I wanted to try their 154CM version of this beast. And as you can see, I've already gotten the blade a little dirty. Maybe the handle a little dirty. And I've started to reprofile the edge. Comes in kind of thick. It is not a scandy by any stretch of the imagination. Has a huge secondary bevel. But with a lot of work, you could probably turn it into a scandy vex, which is what I'm aiming towards. This is a beast. Just for comparison, Laser Strike from Essie. Now, both happen to have green micarta, which you may have noticed I'm a fan of, but side by side, same measurements. I mean, same blade length, same overall length. This may be a little bit wider, taller, but holy crap. The blade thickness is considerably thicker on this. Might be a little too much. I don't know. Feels good in my hand though. I'm not a fire steel guy. I don't do that sort of thing. I'm not striking flints. If I want to light something at the fire pit, do a bunch of shavings. Lighter, you know, or come up with something else. I'm not going to ruin the edge and I'm not going to make this a 90 degree spine. It doesn't come in that way. It has this instead and that's the whole reason behind that. But for balance of blade, I don't like that. So I've been toying around with the idea of removing that. Then I started looking around to see if there is a version that doesn't have this extended butt. And I thought I stumbled upon it, but I was wrong. I was just going based on pictures, looking at them really quick, and I stumbled upon this. And I didn't see the protrusion. And I thought, aha! That's what I want. But this is a 3.5. But I'll do a review of this knife on a separate video. Spoiler alert. I like it. Put it back in the sheath. And I'll show you everything I did to the sheath and all that good stuff. Speaking of sheaths. Back to this knife. So you have this beast. I'm going to probably wind up grinding that off. Now that's a hell of a lot of steel. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> I do like the handle shape. I do like the texture of the green micarta. That's what I wanted. It has red liners. It came in a kydex sheath with a spring clip. No offense, tops. I hate those. I bend them, unscrew, and take the clip off. And then I strategically relocate a tech lock kind of like I did to this one 
and use that instead. But in this case, I just went the heck with it. In the trash it goes. I found that I had a spare condor sheath that this fits like a glove in. So that's where this will reside. It can stay in a leather sheath. It's stainless. It's not going to oxidize quickly. It's going to be fine. I have put a different edge on this. I can see where this is going to turn into a better chopper and slicer. I think when I remove this, that's a lot of steel, it's going to throw the weight forward a little bit. It's going to make a better chopper and might even be more comfortable because when you're chopping you're not holding the whole handle. You're usually holding back and it's a two finger grip, sometimes a three finger grip. And from experience, the other day I was up there working on a couple of those trees, chopping some dead stuff off and this was not that comfortable. And then I was batoning with it, and the edge is still a little on the fat side. It doesn't really want to bite in. It wants to bounce out. I actually found, with this starting off a little thinner and having a convex edge, it was a better batoner and chopper, thanks to that. But still not the best. My best chopper in this sort of size is my Becker BK-10 Crewman. From Camillus, the older version. I did a whole video, maybe I'll put a link up around there to the video where I compare the new BK-10 to the old BK-10 and there's a lot of differences. I do admire how they consistently get the little shapes in there and you know it's got the divot I'm not sure, please somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think the very earlier versions only had the bow divot on one side. I like symmetry when it comes to knives, so that's kind of cool. I like the black hardware with the green and the red. I really want this knife to work out. There is one other thing I may change. I have a tendency to do this on all the knives that I own is this pointy thing may find itself really rounded out. I did it on the 3.5 much more comfortable to choke up and then the other thing I may do which I've done on the Beckers because they come in kind of sharp is just hit this with a buffer and smooth those out a little bit. I'm not going to grind them away just smooth them out. As far as holding an edge, it took some punishment the other day, and for 154 cm, they're heat treating it very nicely. I do not know if they're doing a differential heat treat, but this held up to some good beating. I don't know if I hit the same stones or anything, but the SE had a couple of tiny chips in the edge. This does not. And then the big thing that I do. So I make walking sticks, and I always peel the bark off, and I scrape. And even with new shovel handles, all that lacquer or axe handles, I scrape it off. And that really will let you know how your edge is going to hold up. This may have rolled just a skosh, but I didn't have to resharpen it. All I did was, I think, four passes each side with the strop. All done. Back to a very good working edge. So this is part one and if you're looking for a knife as it sits that's going to be quite the performer. Heavy. You're gonna know you have it but you're gonna be able to rely on it and it's very well constructed. You're gonna be able to beat the absolute snot out of it and admire its construction. I recommend this knife. So put that in the plus column. I will of course follow up and show you the end result with the butt gone and more of a Scandivex edge. Honestly, I don't like having to set up the camera and 
do the tutorial thing. No offense. It's just not really... I like to, when my brain says, let's do that project, I just put the mask on <laughs> and go for it. I'm not going to set up stuff and, and do that sort of thing anymore. That That's just not really my bag, man. It's not my thing. So that's the that's going to be the follow-up video. You'll see the end product, and that'll tell you how I feel about it. And we'll go from there.